Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. Five days since I served my SDBXW, 30 female of seven years, now everyone is piling on me to talk to her. Part 2 Update 2 Thanks to all of you Redditors, I'm feeling a lot better today. You are all simply great. Taking time out of your day to assist a total stranger on the internet. I bend my head in thanks to each and every one of you. Anyway, many people have asked me to provide updates when events occur, so here we go. My wife has been admitted to a medical institution after a suicide attempt. She has 27 stitches on her wrist, so it's a fairly severe situation, her mother informed me. Surprisingly, she didn't ask for anything. Instead, she just asked me to let her know if she could be of any assistance. She is just amazing. I still haven't spoken to my wife. I'll contact her when I'm ready. I've never met her before, and I'm not ready to meet her now. She is the mother of my children, and I want her to be healthy and capable of being a good mother to them, but I'm not going to let her newest behavior affect my mind. My wife was fully aware that if she ever cheated on me, our relationship would be irreparably damaged. I offered her several chances to change her mind, but she didn't. I've had plenty of chances to cheat throughout the years. I've gotten foolish drunk on occasion, but I've never acted on it. I've never even flirted in return. Even when I was completely insane, I understood what I had to do. I've had crushes as well, and I recognize that it's normal for everyone to do so. But once again, I've never acted on them. In fact, I've gone out of my way to avoid contact with others long enough for the crush to pass. In my opinion, there are no mitigating circumstances or excuses for my wife's decisions and behavior. I'm talking about if you murder someone while driving intoxicated. It's not an excuse to say you were intoxicated. There is no other option than divorce. I refuse to listen to any justifications. My mind is made up. I'll never be able to forgive her, so it's best to get it out of the way now. It's the greatest choice for everyone, including her. I know I said I wanted to burn it all down, but I'm not going to do it. This is a dream that I made up in my head because it felt amazing. Hurting her, getting her fired, and so forth. It will have no effect on me or my children. It will most likely only make me accountable for her care. And if this becomes well known, it will reflect negatively on my children. It's not a cost I'm prepared to pay for some temporary emotional enjoyment. So far, I've just spoken with my parents, my brother, and her mother. Her father died a year ago. Even if retribution is so enticing, I'm likely to keep it that way. Frank's wife is doing much better. We now embrace when we weep. We have absolutely no romantic feelings for one other. Stop recommending that we bang exclamation to be honest. Having the support of someone who is going through the same thing is quite beneficial, particularly when it becomes too much to handle. My wife is the first and only person to whom I have opened up since I was a youngster. Frank's wife is just the second woman he has married. It was difficult for me to trust people to begin with, and now, I find it almost impossible. But how did I end up feeling at ease with Frank's wife? We make a lot of progress when working and discussing things at the apartment. I really went to visit Frank today with Frank's wife. It was a little emotional, but his conduct was rather predictable in the end. Frank is, how can I put this in the nicest possible terms? Is he a dreadful blot on humanity? I didn't say anything throughout the meeting. I was only there to provide emotional support to my new acquaintance. He was frantic, promising anything and everything simply to get her return home. He spilled the beans, and it turns out I was correct about my wife not being the only one. He has had four mistresses in the previous year and two before that. The first was barely three months after they married. He believes he has an addiction. What if he's like this? Why not bring it up before you get married? Or, better then, why get married at all? This man is the most flimsy, slimy piece of garbage I've ever encountered. But maybe I'm prejudiced, I was afraid I'd knock out his lights before we met. But after seeing him, I simply felt terrible for him I don't perceive him as a genuine guy, but more as a poor copy of one. That insight was unexpectedly freeing. He practically took no accountability, none at all. Is it possible that all of this was someone else's fault what? Frank, please come back. 
At one point, he even attempted gaslighting and blaming his wife. I had to laugh out loud to get him to stop talking. I'll get ready to meet my wife perhaps next week, and I'll invite my father along. I value his perspective, and he is extremely excellent at being unbiased. So if I or she are unreasonable, he will be able to call us out on it. I don't want to sugarcoat anything or provide false hope. We're done, and we're getting divorced. There is no hope of reconciliation. We must now figure out how to co-parent and dwell harmoniously on the same planet. I'm afraid I'll give up. I'm hoping I can suck it up long enough to stay the course. It is, without a doubt, the greatest alternative for everyone. There's no use in dragging things out when I already know the conclusion. I was quite fair in my proposed divorce arrangement, splitting everything 50-50. But now that she has broken down, I will request that I have primary custody for the time being. I've already agreed with my parents to resume day-to-day -day responsibility for the kids. I want to bring my kids back to as regular a life as feasible as quickly as possible. I spoke with CPS, and they are extremely positive so there are no difficulties there. I'll also be returning to our home by the end of the week. Frank's wife will be able to remain in the apartment for as long as she wants, and I'd want to have a somewhere to go if I need to. Update 3. Frank's wife has been a complete disaster. It began 5-6 hours after yesterday's argument with Frank, and neither of us has slept at all. She was taken up by an ambulance a few hours ago. She began suffering terrifying panic episodes. She couldn't breathe and was shivering on the floor from painful convulsions. It's been terrifying, terrifying. I'm also in no condition to adequately care for her or anybody else right now. I've asked my father to come stay with me since I'm having a hard time today and don't want to be alone. Because Frank was listed as her emergency contact, I had to phone him and advise him not to come to the hospital if they called. It was the last thing she instructed me to do before she was taken away. I didn't know what to do with him, so I essentially warned him that if he didn't comply with her requests and stay away, I would ruin his whole world. I'm hoping he pays attention. If he doesn't, I don't have the energy to do something about it for the time being. I don't have any strength left, and I'm simply sad and empty. I don't want my kids to see me like this, but I miss them so much. I'm hoping my father can help me get back on my feet, and that I'll be able to visit them later today. The finality of it all is beginning to sink in, and I'm finding it difficult to deal. This is what cheats don't consider, the consequences of their greed. In their wake comes a mountain of unending anguish and human ruin. And for what purpose? What about cheat thrills? For fun. Is it a fantasy? Attention, I just can't get my brain around it. What could these prices and dangers possibly be worth? I am still adamant about getting divorced. I am aware of my own shortcomings, yet I am unable to forgive her. To achieve that, I'd have to remove my self-esteem, and I'd despise myself for it. If I did that, I would be no good to anybody. If we attempted to reconcile, the hate and resentment would inevitably come to the surface and I would abuse her. I'm not even convinced I'd be able to maintain my nonviolence over time. That's not who I want to be. So the only choice is to divorce and remove all communication except what is required to co-parent our children. Perhaps in the future I will be able to forgive her and we will be able to become friends, but that is just not a possibility right now. I spoke with my wife's mother. My wife is stable for the time being, but she is on suicide watch and will be transported to a specialist psychiatric institution for additional treatment today. My wife reportedly got aware of my articles on Reddit and after reading them, she attempted to terminate them. My wife's mother chastised me heavily for writing here. But I don't regret it since, all things considered, it has helped me go ahead. That's not who I want to be. So the only choice is to divorce and remove all communication except what is required to co-parent our children. Perhaps in the future I will be able to forgive her and we will be able to become friends, but that is just not a possibility right now. I spoke with my wife's mother. My wife is stable for the time being, but she is on suicide watch and will be transported to a specialist psychiatric institution for additional treatment today. My wife reportedly got aware of my articles on Reddit, and after reading them, she attempted to terminate them. My wife's mother chastised me heavily for writing here, but I don't regret it since, all things considered, it has helped me go ahead. 
I don't believe my wife's goal was to get attention. She was much too driven for that. Many people have made compelling claims that my wife was high or something, and that Frank is some kind of magical snake oil salesman. This might be the case, and if so, it will be simpler for me to build a friendly co-parenting relationship. I will be able to execute this regardless of time constraints, but it will need a significant amount of work on my part. Incorporating this viewpoint will make it a little simpler to proceed in that direction. All that remains is for me to persuade myself that this is the fact. I'm not sure how I'm going to accomplish it. It still doesn't explain her behaviors and decisions, so I'll strive to keep on track since it's in everyone's best interests. Writing here has been really soothing and enjoyable for me, however, owing to the current scenario, I believe I will refrain from posting for the time being. Probably till next week following my meeting with my wife on Tuesday. I'm not sure whether I'll feel the urge before then, but I believe I need a break. I need some time to think and ponder without continuous input, so I'll take it easy over the weekend and simply think things through. Update 4. I haven't sleep in a few days, at least I believe it's a few days. I'm not sure whether it's a little hazy right now. Since my previous article, I've spent the most of my time with my father and visited Frank's wife in the hospital. She'll remain for a while since she's having a hard time coming to terms with her circumstances. I try to be helpful, but to be honest, I'm probably not much help to anybody right now. I was going to move back to my home today, but I'm going to postpone it until I get my feet back under me. I'm not sure what's going on with my wife. I'll go see her on Tuesday. Please let me know if you know why they cut my posting so I can be more cautious in the future. Stay tuned for the next part.